Bam! Hey everyone, it's Rose Jacobson, and I'm joined again with my friend, YouTube celebrity and agent of the stars, as long as avid, avid blogger, Lee Tawil. Lee? Nice to be back, Rose. It's always a pleasure being on your show. All right, we're going to do some fast-paced talking today, and our first category is Brittany Griner. She is what, like 6'7", six, 6'8"? Six, she is ginormous amongst the women. Now, see, everybody's making a big deal that she's dunked twice in a game. But if you're 6'8", six, or 6'7", six, whatever she is, you shouldn't be dunking twice every game. That shouldn't be a big thing. I understand she's a female. Females don't dunk a lot. But when the best gets three inches above your head, you figure you're really not even jumping at this point, and a dunk would be required in almost every game. So I don't see the really impressive thing about that. Not to hate on her. She's obviously a wonderful player. But just I don't understand the big deal made when she dunks the ball. Lee? And I agree. And I'm not even so sure she is a female. Have you heard her speak recently? No, I haven't. No joke, but I was actually watching her speak I put my head down for a second to look at my phone and I was like is that a man speaking right now I'm pretty sure that she has male genitalia and I don't know I think they have to investigate a little bit further because I'm not so sure she's a female fighting words there fighting words there Lee our next topic you got a lot of good rookies in the NBA this season. Who's your favorite? Who is your favorite? Exactly. My personal favorite's got to be Marshawn Brooks. I feel like he's really coming out of his shell this season. He's had his ups and his downs, but in the end, he's been a pretty good shooter, showing great, um, great talent, and I think that he's definitely going to have a great future in this league. Lee? I agree with you. I mean, you watched him last year in college, put up like 52 points in a game, and you said, wow, this guy's got raw talent. Will he be able to carry it over to the NBA game? And I have to say, in all honesty, he's been able to do that seamlessly. He belongs on the NBA courts, and he just knows how to put the ball in the hoop. He just has a knack for it. And you look at his defense even. This guy is very lengthy. Guy's always in the passing lanes, so... Next question. If you were going to go to a party, which NBA athlete would you want to be your wingman? This is a great question because, I don't know if you know this, but I go up to tons and tons of people and I ask them, would you want Matt Barnes at your birthday party? And nobody has ever said yes to my question, which is why I call him Birthday Barnes now. <laughs> I gave him the nickname Birthday Barnes. Why would you even ask that? I ask it because he's in the NBA, he's on a good team, but he's not so great as an individual player. So, I want to know, do people care he's an NBA player? Would you want him at your birthday party? And everybody says, no, it's Matt Barnes. Why do I want him at my birthday party? I was like, if I said Kobe Bryant could be at your birthday party, you'd say yes in three seconds. And they say, yeah, of course, Kobe Bryant. Personally, I would go with my all-time favorite, Rasheed Wallace. I think he would be a great wingman, and I think he would be funny, and I think he would be awesome, and I love him. That's my answer. Next rapid-fire question. Lee? Is it the responsibility of NBA players to be role models? We just spoke about guys like Rasheed Wallace. You know a guy like Charles Barkley. You see him all the time on NBA on TNT. Are these guys required as professional basketball players to be role models for the youth. As a very big Tim Tebow fan, I'm going to have to go with yes. And I'm going to have to, not quote because I don't remember exactly what he said, but Tim Tebow always says how a bunch of other guys go out there saying we're not supposed to be role models, blah, blah, blah. You're not supposed to be, but you understand that you are given that platform as a professional athlete and you are put into the spotlight. And I think personally that they should use their spotlight and their platform to promote better things. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone makes bad decisions, but I think they should have a little bit of good things going on out there. Kind of like Kyle Korver. Big Kyle Korver fan because of all the work he does outside of basketball for the people. What about you? Can't say that I agree with you any less. Because they're given a stage, they're given a platform, and I think maybe it's not required of them, but if they have half of common sense within themselves... They should want 
to be role models because look at the power that they're given just because of the face time that they have you know some people have their 15 minutes of fame and they use that these guys have fame not just 15 minutes but they have fame and they have the opportunity to use it to benefit the world I mean, why not? All right, so right now we're going to do our kiss and tell section. See now. And we're going to pick one NBA athlete, both Lee and I, that you would want to kiss right now from a designated team. Which team are we talking? We're talking Indiana Pacers. <laughs> we're talking Indiana Pacers. <laughs> and who would you want to kiss, Lee? Uh, I believe her name... The Indiana Pacers sideline reporter is looking really good these days. Don't recall what her name is, but I know she's looking good. I guess if I had to pick anybody, I would pick Jenny Granger. I think he's a cute guy, good player, and yeah, that's who I would kiss if I had to pick someone on the Pacers. And yeah, so that pretty much sums the first segment of Friends of Fun. So until next time, we'll see you guys later. Woo! Party, party! <laughs> I'm Rich Jacobson. And I'm Lee Towell. See you guys. Bye.